Hey guys, it's Summer Rain from Homestead, Brooklyn. And if you remember in the last episode of Plant One On Me, episode 52, we looked at how plants use light. Now in this episode, which is part two to that, episode 53, we're going to be looking at how we can accurately measure light in our home. So let's get started. So most of us in the house plant community actually go to our windows and say, okay, this is where full sun comes in. This is bright light. This is low light or medium light, and it's all relative. But if we want to actually get into accurate measurements of light, we're going to have to count photons and photons are just particles of light. Now, in order to do that, you have to get a little savvier and bring in meters. Now I have two meters here and you have a foot candle meter, which is a unit of measurement that looks at perceived brightness for humans. So this doesn't necessarily accurately measure what a plant sees. However, these are relatively inexpensive. You could come by them very often and it's what most houseplant people have actually used. Now we have a PAR meter or quantum meter and PAR stands for photosynthetically active radiation. And this measures photons of light. Harder to come by, a little bit more expensive, but way more accurate when it comes to measuring light in your home. So if you go with the more inexpensive option, the foot candle meter, then you'll want to actually know that it has some challenges with it. The first challenge, as I had mentioned, if you remember back in episode 52, we talk about how plants and humans distinguish light. We both use the visible wave band of the spectrum. So that's generally between 400 nanometers and 740 nanometers. However, for humans, we perceive that green wave band way brighter than any other wave band. So if we look at red light or if we look at blue violet light, that's going to look dimmer to us. Whereas plants don't distinguish among the photons. And that's the same way when it comes to the PAR meter, it doesn't distinguish between photons in the sense that blue photon is just as good as a red photon is just as good as a green photon. So that's actually one of the challenges when it comes to a foot candle meter. Because if I hold this up to a blue or red wave band, then it's going to look dimmer to the foot candle meter, even though it might actually be really, really bright light for the plant. Additionally, if you're going to go with the foot candle meter, there's another challenge. And that challenge is that you have to actually put this into one channel of light. And what I mean by channel is that this has three channels, one for a fluorescent light. So times one is for a fluorescent light times 10 is for sunlight and times 100 is for really bright sunlight. Now this could obviously be challenging if you're in your home, because if you have a home like mine, you're often getting light from very different sources. So you might have an incandescent bulb and you might have sunlight and then the cloud cover comes and it's going to be lower sunlight, but then all of a sudden that cloud cover leaves and it's bright sunlight and you might have a fluorescent light and an LED bulb. And so when you're talking about measuring from a foot candle meter, this is going to be very confused. Whereas if you have a quantum meter, this is only going to be counting photons. So it's not going to be confused and it's going to give you a much more accurate representation of light in your home. So I'm going to use both of these meters in my home to show you how they view light. But first, let's go over the different parts and components for each of these gadgets. Now this foot candle meter has a face where you can look at lux as well as foot candles. And then as I mentioned before, it has three different channels. So times one is for fluorescent light, times 10 is for sunlight, and times 100 is for really, really bright light. Now the way to measure the light comes up from the top. So this is where the sunlight comes in. So if you're going to want to accurately measure your light for a plant, you're going to want to have the, the plant leaf right next to the canopy, not like underneath where the, the plant is, unless you want to try to get how much light is hitting the bottom leaves. You really just want to usually measure from the, the top leaf and point this to where the light source is coming from. Now the PAR meter has a way to measure the light as well. And this little element right here, which is probably what makes the PAR meter much more expensive, is that it actually looks at every single wave band of light and measures the photon. So this again gives a much more accurate representation and you're gonna to wanna to point this to where the point source of the light is primarily coming from. And on the screen, you'll actually see the light numbers moving up and down and that's giving you quantum per unit moles per second in order to be able to view how much photons are coming in and hitting that plant. 
Now you can technically actually convert foot candles to quantum units, but it's a little bit more complicated than that because as I mentioned with the foot candle meter, you have to have it on the right kind of channel. And if you have multiple channels coming in, multiple point sources of light, for instance, fluorescent, LED, incandescent sunlight, then that is not going to give you an accurate representation for you to convert. But if you're just looking at a fluorescent light per se, then you know that you have it on the first channel, which is times one, and then you could actually convert that to a quantum unit. And then if you have it on sunlight, you're gonna use a different conversion to get that to a quantum unit. And that's way too complicated for what I wanna do here in this episode. So let's just get to measuring light so you could see for yourself. So I have my quantum meter here with my aspect light and this aspect light is amazing. I actually have three of these. They're LED grow lights and you've got to keep tuned to my Instagram and my email because I am going to be giving away one of these bad boys FYI in the near future. So stay tuned to that. But for this purposes, I'm going to just show you how this quantum light meter versus the foot candle meter actually measures light. So here I'm directly up against this aspect light. And this is reading around 4,000 units, which is really full sunlight, which is what's here. But I, I just wanna just show you as I drop this down, even just six inches, it's starting to get into the 2200 to 2400 range. And that is just with a six inch drop. Now, if I drop it down even further, say about a foot, I'm around 500 units, which is starting to get into highlight to medium highlight. And then if I drop it down yet again, say double that, I'm already in like the 100 to 200 range, which just goes to show you that this is kind of more medium to approaching low light. And you'll see then how much the light diffuses from this particular light. So I'm gonna have my foot candle meter right here. And you'll see that I have it on the wrong channel up against my aspect light, because it's off, if you see this little meter mark, that is totally off the charts. So this is full bright sunlight, so I have to move it to X100 right here. And then you'll see that we are really even pushing off the charts there because this is super bright light. But as soon as I start to drop it down, you know, just six inches to a foot, it starts to get lower and lower. And as we demonstrated with the quantum meter, it's no longer really bright light. It's probably just regular sunlight. And you'll see how different of a reading it actually gives you on a different channel. And even if I drop it down even further, then you know that's probably the equivalent. This LED light is probably equivalent to the sunlight channel. So as you can see, this could be a little bit confusing especially if I situate it back and forth from the different channels, it'll give you completely different readings for that particular light within your house. So here's another one of my grow lights and I'll be doing a giveaway for this one as well. It has more of a full spectrum purple and red light, which again, this is where plants really get active within their chlorophyll synthesis. You could see if I'm like right up to the light, it's starting to read in that kind of 3000 to 4000 range, very similar to the aspect light. And if I drop it down some, this is already starting to get into kind of high to moderate light. So if I drop it down all the way, you know, your plant is going to be in that low light condition. So now I have my foot candle meter in this blue and red grow light. And as I showed you with my quantum meter, it is very bright light, very similar to the aspect light. So I have this on the times 100, but you could see that the reading in foot candles is really low, which is completely unusual, but maybe not unusual now that we know that foot candles look at how we perceive light versus how plants perceive light, and that the red and blue wavelengths look dim to us, and therefore the foot candle meter is going to have a dimmer look on this. Now I can move it to a separate channel and all of a sudden the foot candles go up. So I, I'm not quite sure actually what would be the best channel to get the better light right reading here. And again, that's part of the reason why 
you know, foot candles are not reliable and why it's getting phased out. Hey guys, so I hope you really enjoyed that episode and you have a better sense on how to accurately measure light in your home. And of course, if you love these episodes, I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel. And you could also follow along my journey on homesteadbrooklyn.com and also on my Instagram at homesteadbrooklyn. And if you haven't checked it out yet, don't forget to look at the Kickstarter, the How to Make a Plant Love You Houseplant Masterclass. I'd love your support for that and help make that a reality. Thanks a lot and see you next week. Bye.